Let's talk RSV today. And we've seen it in the headlines. What is RSV? Yeah, so uh, great to be able to chat about this today, Jason. And so RSV is something called respiratory syncytial virus. So it's just another one of those viruses that causes an upper and lower respiratory tract infection. Um, much like COVID or various flu viruses or various cold viruses, but it does cause a specific respiratory virus. Now, the big thing about RSV is that we hear about it most commonly associated with children. So it isn't just children that can get RSV, but almost every child gets RSV by the time they reach the age of two because it's so commonly spread amongst children in daycares and those sorts of settings. It is important though to recognize that, as I said, it's not just the kids that get it, it's also adults. It tends to be a less severe disease in most of adulthood. And then once again, in late adulthood, so as you're, probably, as you're getting into your 70s and 80s, et cetera, it becomes a more severe disease once again. Okay, that's very surprising to me because I had only heard about, and the headlines only talk about kids getting this, children getting this, infants getting this. Um, now, I wanted to ask you about preventative measures, and that's specifically targeted to kids. Is there anything that parents can do to help prevent it from taking hold? Yeah, so there's a bunch of different things. So first of all, you're right. We are seeing lots and lots and lots of RSV this year um, in children specifically. And you would have been seeing a lot of those headlines because it has been overwhelming for a lot of children's hospitals and pediatric uh, divisions uh, of hospitals across the province and really the country. Um, and part of that is because over the course of the past few years, where kids would have usually got RSV and kind of regular numbers and that sort of thing, they're getting it kind of all at once right now because kids are going out, because their kids are socializing with others, and because for the most part, nobody's wearing masks. So we need to recognize that not having a lot of these public health measures in place and all the gatherings and that sort of thing it really is leading to an uptick in RSV and, of course, other viruses as well. Now, to answer your question, there are a lot of things that we can do, um, both as, as individuals in general for preventing RSV amongst ourselves, but also as parents uh, for preventing it for children. So the regular things apply. So wear a mask, don't go out if you're, if you're sick, and things like that. These are all um, public health measures that I think we know really well now because of COVID, but they also do a really, really great job of preventing other respiratory viruses, such as RSV, but also colds and flu viruses. Like we basically didn't see any influenza at all over the course of the past two years as a result of them. And these are all things that, that will really help with RSV as well. But additionally, if your child is immunocompromised or has other uh, conditions that lead uh, your child to be very high risk for RSV, there are actually medications that they can take it kind of like a vaccine uh, beforehand, um, but it really is only indicated in a certain specific population of children. So if your children fall into that category, I would encourage you to really speak with your pediatrician or your family physician uh, and look through some of those options. Now, you mentioned there that, you know, we're hearing about it because hospitals are overwhelmed with many children, infants getting this at the same time. As a parent, how do you know when it is the proper time to take your child to the hospital? What are the warning signs? What do you look for? So I think it, the most important thing to recognize is that if your child is having any difficulty breathing or if your child is having any uh, any difficulty keeping uh, food or water, et cetera, down, those are all times to bring them into the hospital, into the emergency department, or at the very least uh, to contact your pediatrician. I think that being in touch with your pediatrician or going to walk-in clinic, these are good ideas, particularly if you're concerned at all, uh, but recognizing that children do develop fevers, for example, as a result of RSV that can last for several days at a time. And remembering that we do have home-based uh, medications, you know, your children's Tylenol, et cetera, that can be used to bring down these fevers and to help with that and to help with some of that comfort. Those don't always need a pediatrician's advice, uh, let alone an eMERGE visit. But if there are any warning signs, please always bring your children uh, to the attention of medical professions, professionals. All right, before we go, I did want to touch on one more thing. Obviously, with the holidays coming up, um, we're going to be spending time with family. Uh, what are the recommendations 
masks all the time? Or what else can we do to help those in the family who may be a little bit vulnerable from getting sick? Yeah, so it, we've been talking a lot about RSV, but I think we need to recognize that it isn't an island, right? It's not an isolated virus. And as we're seeing, we've got RSV, we've got influenza, which is spiking a lot earlier and a lot a lot uh, um, higher than we usually see at this time. And then, of course, COVID as well. The things that we can do to help decrease that volume of disease in our community um, is, of course, what we already know and love. So get your COVID vaccines, particularly a bivalent vaccine. It's a little bit different than the other COVID vaccines you may have had in the past because it targets Omicron, which is what's been circulating over the course of the past year. So remember to get that. Remember to get your flu vaccine because also it will lead to prevention of, yes, flu and decreasing of those symptoms. And then, of course, other things like washing your hands, wearing a mask, I like to wear masks in public indoor places. That's where you'll always find me wearing a mask. I recognize that sometimes it's difficult. And when you're at things like Christmas gatherings and things like that, it might be awkward. I recognize that. I recognize how difficult that can be sometimes, but it is important to wear a mask when you can. And taking a mask off for a little bit to eat, for example, it doesn't change the whole picture. You can always put your back mask back on and help decrease that risk overall. And lastly, if you're feeling unwell, stay home. If people in your house are feeling unwell, stay home. I recognize how important it is to be able to see other people and to socialize, particularly as it's getting colder and we want to be with other people. And because the past, you know, almost three years have, have been difficult. But really look out for other people by staying home if you're feeling unwell and doing all of these things that we know how to do um, over the course of the past few years of this pandemic. Dr. Kalina, always appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thanks again for having me.